friends today we are going to start a series of history of english literature history of english literature has been divided into different periods it begins with anglo saxon period so friends let's start our video first of all we will look at the political history of anglo saxon period because history is a founding stone for any literature without knowing history it is difficult to understand the literature friends as you can see on the screen celts were the original inhabitants of the island known as england they settled here up to 55 bc in 43 ad roman successfully annexed it as a province to their most dominant dynasty and they ruled here till 410 ad then period of anglo saxon kingdom starts and they they were all in all till 787 in 787 viking invasion began and gradually they occupied almost half of the england it doesn't mean the anglo saxon rule ended completely but they were still ruling in wessex by 954 viking rule ended and england united under wessex in 1066 william of normandy defeated the last anglo saxon king Harold Godwinson at the battle of Hastings and conquered England thus anglo-saxon rule ended so friends now let's talk about celts they were the original inhabitants of the island their language was known as celtic they were pagan and their religion was known as animism a latin word for spirit they were also known as brythons so the island named britannia under their tribal name Now let's have a look at Roman occupation. Britain was an attractive target for Roman because of material wealth, particularly mines. Julius Caesar began invasion in 55 BC. He again attacked in 54 BC but failed to conquer the island. By 1st century AD, Claudius attacked with 38 war elephant and he succeeded in establishing Roman rule over here. In 43 AD Britannia became the province of Roman Empire. It was a peaceful invasion native people were not killed. How Roman occupation impacted Britain. Roman established military campuses that eventually became towns. Thus they introduced Roman civilization and culture. They maintained peace, Christianity began to replace paganism, people began to embrace Christianity. Latin heavily influenced the local language because it was the language of ruling class. As Michael Foucault explained the relationship between knowledge and power and says who are in power they will definitely impose their language culture and religion. As Romans ruled over 400 years the influence of Latin over local language was obvious. And Celts for embracing Christianity so they had to learn Latin for religious purposes. One more important thing that Latin was lingua franca at the time as English is today. That's why prestige was given to Latin. And then Roman had to leave the island. Why? Because Visigoth attacked Rome. Visigoth was a very violent and fierce tribe at the time. They had to leave Britain to save their own land. They withdrew their military forces from here. In those days Picts and Scots were continuously attacking Britain. To confine their attacks Roman built Hadrian Wall. You can see picture of Hadrian Wall on your screen. Roman left the island defenseless and Celts were unable to compete with them. So they invited Germanic tribes as mercenaries. These were Angles, Saxon and Jutes. Before that they were living along the coast of Sweden and Denmark. Angle and Saxon were more powerful that's why this period called Anglo-Saxon period. Britain began to be called as Angleland under their name. They were invited as mercenaries but they permanently settled here. Why? Because they got fertile soil, England was rich in material wealth, mines were also there. It was a safe place to be settled. By 670, they had occupied almost the whole of the country. The new masters of England spoke a branch of Indo-European languages, which later known as Old English. They were pagan. Anglo-Saxon established seven kingdoms which eventually became Anglo-Saxon heptarchy. It can be seen on the screen Northumbria, Mercia, Wessex, 
ईस्ट एंग्लिया कैंट ससिक्स एंड एसिक्स लाइकवाइज फोर डायलैक्ट वर स्पोकन नॉर्थ अमरियन इन विच लिटरेचर प्रोड्यूस फर्स्टली मर्सियन वेस्ट वेसिक्स एंड कैंटिश वेस्ट वेसिक्स गेन सुप्रीमेसी बिकॉज ऑफ बींग द डायलैक्ट ऑफ मोर सिविलाइज एंड पावरफुल पीपल इट वॉज ऑल्सो द डायलैक्ट ऑफ द ग्लोरियस किंग एल्फ्रेड द ग्रेट एंग्लो सेक्सन क्रॉनिकल्स वॉज ऑल्सो रिटन इन दिस डायलैक्ट फ्रेंड्स नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट ग्लोरियस किंग एल्फ्रेड द ग्रेट ही वॉज द मोस्ट डोमिनेंट एंड पावरफुल किंग ऑफ वेसिक्स He was the only king who successfully defended his kingdom against Viking invasion. He improved education system. He proposed that primary education be conducted in Old English rather than Latin. Alfred saw the Viking attacks as punishment from God, so he set about creating a new system of Christian learning by educating people in Old English. It was Alfred hoped that. This would enable Christianity to begin to capture the imagination of the ordinary people. He improved legal system and military structure. It is said Anglo-Saxon chronicles started to be written in his reign, particularly on his command. Anglo-Saxon chronicle is the first history in vernacular language. Multiple copies were made of that one original and then distributed to monasteries. across england he successfully established english as a literary language he promoted christianity by translating number of religious latin work into old english thus he set foundation for prose in english then there comes the period of viking invasion they were scandinavian means they belong to sweden denmark and norway in anglo saxon chronicles they are called hathen men Viking's famous king was Ragnar Lodbrok. The period of their invasion can be divided into three stages. According to Anglo-Saxon chronicles, they first raided in seven eighty seven. They were looters and plunderers. Their main purpose was to gain wealth. So churches and monasteries were their first target, as these places were rich in wealth and precious objects. For this purpose, they attacked on Lindis Ferne. In 793 it was the wealthiest monastery of England. Secondly, Ragnar Lodbrok attacked in 865. He was defeated by Northumbrian king Ella and he put him into snake spit. In the same year his sons made a huge attack with 350 long boats. They wanted to take revenge of their father's murder. By 865 they occupied East Anglia. Gradually, they expanded their occupation. By eight seventy, they occupied almost half of the England. Hafnir Ragnarsson became first Viking king of Northumbria. At third stage, King Guthrum of Denmark made nine attacks on Wessex in eight seventy eight. At the end, he was defeated by Alfred the Great at the Battle of Edington. According to Anglo-Saxon chronicles, Guthrum's army was able to negotiate a peace treaty. The defeated army promised that they would leave his kingdom and their king Guthrum would receive baptism, and they fulfilled it. Three weeks later, King Guthrum came to King Alfred the Great and received baptism. Guthrum converted to Christian. Treaty of Wedmore signed between the both, and thus Denla established. dividing the lands of alfred and guthrum in 884 guthrum again attacked on wessex and thus ended the wedmore treaty by 954 under the rule of athelstan alfred's grandson england united under wessex friends you can see in the map brown part shows denla it indicates that almost half of the england was under the rule of guthrum let's talk about how anglo-saxons rule ended edward the confessor was the second last anglo-saxon king for having no child harald godwinson claimed of being the next king harald of norway attacked the country and he was successfully defeated by harald godwinson at the battle of stamford bridge when harald godwinson was busy in battle with harald of norway 
विलियम ऑफ नॉर्मेंडे लैंडेड हिज टूप्स एट ईस्ट एंग्लिया एंड हेरल गोडविंसन वॉज किल्ड इन द बैटल ऑफ हेस्टिंग दस विलियम द कंकर बिकेम द किंग ऑफ इंग्लैंड एंडिंग द एंग्लो सैक्सन पीरियड friends it's my first video on youtube i hope it will prove helpful and informative for you you would like it in our next video we will talk about anglo saxon literature i need your encouragement to make such more videos thank you for watching